Welcome to the half year results for NWF Group. It's a positive set of results, profits are up, and we're trading in line with our expectations for each of the three divisions. So let's turn to the key numbers. So revenue and sales are up 16% to just under 296 million for the first half year. And the 40 million growth, half of that has come from increased activity in our feeds and fuel division, and half of that has come from increased commodity prices. The key number we focus on is the headline profit before tax. So at 2.2 million, up 10% on prior year. Net debt's also positive, you can see down to 16.3 million. And that continues to demonstrate the cash generative capability of the group, and a particular improvement in working capital in our feeds division. And finally, we've maintained our interim dividend at a penny, which is our usual policy at this stage of the year. So first of all, if we look at our feeds division, it's been a positive first half. 75% of our sales go to dairy cows, so the price of milk is important. And as you can see, in the first half year, the price of milk has gone up 25% to just under 32 pence per litre. Also, the volume of milk we produced in the UK has increased, and so have feed volumes. So a generally positive environment. If you then look at our business, you can see sales are up, and that's particularly the sales of traded products where we're selling things like soya, wheat, and molasses direct to farmers. You see our volumes are stable at 265,000 tonnes in the half year, but critically, you can see a 700,000 pound improvement in operating profit to 0.4 million. First of all, we've been more targeted in terms of the farmers we're supplying. So we focus on operations to customers who are closer to the mill. Secondly, we benefited from the capital investment we made last year. So this was the mill in Longtown, just near Carlisle, and also the investment in Wardland, Cheshire. And that investment is delivering returns, hence the improvement in profitability. Pricing's moved, so prices have increased, but they've been in line with the commodities. So that's given us this positive result. But then turn to the food division. Um, we did have lower storage levels as anticipated. So you can see average stored pallets at 89,000. Um, that was what we anticipated with the contracts we had uh, during the first half year. Uh, critically, we've been successful in securing new business. This was our target at the start of the year to win new contracts, and we're announcing today we've won over 15,000 pallet spaces of new business. This includes Arla's UHT business, but also more business from Morning Foods, Bart Spices, and also the Applause Pet Food brand. And critically, that fully utilizes the water facility in 2018 and beyond. The customers we do have have actually increased their stock turn in the year. So we've had increased outloads relative to storage volumes. And importantly for the business, service levels have been maintained at 99.5%. Pallet line business performs well, and we've now transformed the entire fleet over to Mercedes. So we've got over 100 Mercedes trucks with better MPG as anticipated. And moving to fuels, a really strong performance from the fuels team in the first half year. Volume has increased to a record 269 million litres. And because it's the period to November, it's been more sales of commercial fuels. So that's diesel and gas oil. And this has been delivered by additional business development resource in some of our key depots. Home County Fuels has delivered to plan over 15 million litres in the first half. Also in the period, Brent crude has increased quite significantly. So $44 about at the start of the period, to now over $70 a barrel, but that doesn't impact our business performance. In point of fact, the price we have of oil today was last seen in November 2014. Heating oil demand has been stable. We had a warm November, but then as you'll recall, we've had a colder December and therefore a rebound in heating oil demand. So operating profit up 22% to 1.1 million. The picture in the photo, just for information, is our Stoke depot where both Staffordshire fuels and NWF fuels cooperate. So if we now turn to the development strategy for the group, we've got a number of opportunities to grow this business going forward. Starting with feeds, you remember we feed one in six dairy cows in Britain, and the picture shows our national distribution of farming customers. We've now got our operating bases in Longtown, Wardle, and Wixland to supply and support these customers. So the first opportunity we have for development is around operating effectiveness. If you think about it in simple terms, we're producing 580,000 tonnes of feed a year. And therefore, if we can save one pound, we'll make over a half a million pounds of extra profit. So there's quite a bit of leverage on that volume. The second opportunity we have is to consolidate the market further. We've made some steps in this area with the acquisition 
of SC Feeds, New Breed and Jim Peet, but there's further opportunities available as well. And thirdly, it's about broadening the offer to our farming customers. We've introduced some new products in the first half, including Ultra Buff and other added value products. And what these do is increase the value added to farm and improve milk yields. So really those are the three key areas of strategy for feeds. If we now look at food, the market for ambient groceries is stable. It's very much linked to population growth. We've got a full and efficient business in Wardle, supported by the new customer wins we announced earlier. The key is therefore to continue to improve and optimize the mix of customers we have and look to add value more to the customers that we have and new customers being taken on board. In the short term, our development is all about getting the new customers that we want bedded in effectively and bringing their stock into the warehouse. Example, we've now got over 5,000 pallets of all of the UHT in our site and that's looking to expand further. The pictures on the right hand side, so some of the adverts we're still running in magazines such as The Grocer to continue to attract new business with which we're being successful. You know, if I now move to fuels, you'll recall we're the third largest distributor in the UK. However, to put it into context, we've only got a 2% market share and there are 150 players smaller in this market. So there's a real opportunity for consolidation to grow this network. You can see the 19 depots on the map, most of them have been by acquisition and the returns we get in this division are well in excess of 20%. So it's something we're looking to consolidate further. However, with all acquisitions, the success is all down to our ability to integrate them effectively. And that's what we focus on in growing the network. But there are opportunities for acquisition and there are also further opportunities for cold starts. So in terms of the summary and outlook, um, as I said, we're very pleased with the first half results positive improvement on prior year. And what we've announced is that our trading since period end has been in line with expectations. And in fact, our expectations for the full year, both in terms of profit and net debt, are unchanged. In feeds, customers continue to optimize feed utilization with the higher milk price, although we do recognize some dairies have started to implement some price reductions. Also, with the increase in commodities we've simulated, we have implemented some small price increases to recover that commodity increase. In food, we're focused on new customer intake, including more Isla product coming in, but also Bart's and morning foods as we talked about earlier. In fuels, with our heating oil, we had a strong December, as you'd anticipated, and a reasonable January. We've got significant financing headroom to support our further development. And we've announced this morning uh, a new non-executive has joined the board. This is a guy by the name of David Downey, and he comes with really relevant experience, having worked at ASDA, HSS Hire, and also in the Origin Agriculture Group in the UK. So a broad breadth of experience, which will help balance and complete the changes we've seen in the board in the last year. And on Brexit, there are no changes in our markets to date. We continue with some contingency planning. And as always, we continue to focus on growth opportunities and we're confident about the performance for the full year. Thank you very much.